So yeah, so um, yeah, so we're really excited that Evan uh, let us come speak to you guys to uh, set us up. Um, we want to tell you about a project we're working on. We're calling it the Diaspora Project. Um, it's very much uh, influenced by Evan Mogan's talk, which was given a couple months ago, and uh, we think we have a. a a good idea of maybe how we want to implement maybe like a sliver of it, how we, we think that something that within scope that we think we could make and we could like, we could use it to kind of make a difference and kind of take the, a first step forward to uh, kind of that idea of the Freedom Box. So, um, anyone want to go? Yeah, so, so just, is, I guess this is represented as half of how many people view the internet, uh, but, but it's much more than this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but 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 basically, right? We we all know this is the same thing that Evan talked about. You know how uh, you know we sort of have this history of like things were once separate, and now it's all conglomerated into sort of this server client model. Um, that was something that I think we all were really sort of inspired by that idea that uh, you know maybe that isn't the maybe that's how it maybe naturally evolved, but maybe that's not really actually the most the the, the architecture which makes the most sense. So uh, again, like this is all stuff you guys know. You know that right now everybody's putting all of their information in one place, whether that's YouTube or Facebook or all these different things, right? This is this is all things that Evan was saying, and uh, it's not that peer-to-peer -peer model, which sort of when the internet was invented, that people sort of imagined that it would be, you know, people directly serving things to other people. Um, so we were kind of thinking about this when we were trying to think of, uh, you know, what what we could do to sort of make something that would sort of kind of try to. Rectify this. Yeah, because kind of like as Evan Monglin was saying, also like they give they give us nothing, like the ability to post photos on the internet or like comment on photos or on videos, and which is we've been doing it in the year two thousand, yeah. and and so yeah, so I guess the Freedom Box. We just want to make the first step towards the Freedom Box. In particular, we want to write server side software that runs on pretty much anything. So, um, in particular, so I guess this is some of our things that we would like to do. Like, so one reason why it would be, I guess, convenient is because not only is it gonna pull in all your information and well, hold on, let's just talk about really like, quickly. Okay. Yeah, jumping ahead. I mean, no, I was just gonna say like, well, like all your stuff is gonna be in one place, and that that's convenient for many people. That's why they have aggregators. Well, so no matter where it's running, you're going to be able to, or you're going to be able to export all of your data in whatever form you want. So it's a first thing. So like the Dropbox. Yeah, sort of. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, so yeah. We're just we're just trying to draw the line because we're not going to go straight to Freedom Box land because, for one, we think that's kind of majorly inconvenient. People aren't used to that right now. Right. So we got to draw a line. So, do you want to? Yeah, I was just saying, like, so the Freedom Box is, like, we see it's, like, an end point, and it's almost, like, the end of where we want to go, and I think I think in order to get there, um, these are kind of four things that, that we wanted to maybe say, like, okay, we're, we're going to, like, start the inertia towards sort of the Freedom Box, but, but to, from people going to signing up for Facebook and logging in at any time on demand to going to, you know, carrying around a Shiva plug in their pocket where they're just going to plug it in in order to get their information, that's a really big, like, paradigm shift and a really big behavioral shift. And people don't necessarily, like, s normal people don't necessarily, like, change their behavior, like, overnight on this kind of thing. So we want, we want it to take, essentially, a step and kind of scope the idea of the Freedom Box in a way that we think that people would get an experience which is comparable what to they're getting to now, but actually in, in, in its architecture and sort of its formation is much closer to sort of the concept of a Freedom Box. So that kind of brings us to what we were kind of saying and what Ilya was sort of uh, mentioning a little bit earlier. Of, um, this is our kind of like first attempt at like a step towards the Freedom Box. Uh, again, like this kind of stuff doesn't necessarily happen overnight, and uh, we need to sort of start the ball rolling in this kind of idea. Yeah, we just want to raise the mass of people towards privacy because it, it's not that people don't care for privacy because there are like on Facebook when Facebook opens their debates for privacy, lots of people give input say like, no, I don't want my location shared or all of these things on on the publicly viewable page, but. But right now, like there's also there's nothing for not even for us. There's nothing that is both super convenient and super privacy friendly. 
So, so yeah, basically what we want to do is create something that feels like how the way Facebook works now, but in reality is much more centralized. So we, we think we have a couple of ideas for how this works. So again, this so is... It's going to be a web server, basically, that will run on any computer, but we expect people to either run it on computers they already have lying around, or to have it hosted on basically like rented hosting, which is like, you know, I already have rented hosting right now, or on something more like a sort of portable virtual machine, maybe that lives off on a flash drive, or something somewhere around here. We're trying to think about like, no, I'm, you know, maybe there's not that many people who run a web server under their bed, but there's an even bigger slice of people who maybe, not, let's just say, run their own WordPress installation on their own website, right? So um, we think that um, obviously that there is like a certain level of security that like you don't necessarily own that hardware. Maybe you don't even know where that hardware is. But we think that um, if we could sort of, in a way, create something that would people would get used to the idea of centralizing all of their information, so it could work for them rather than being dispersed across the internet. Um, we think that's a really key shift that needs to happen first. Dispersed across the internet and owned by corporations. Right, so absolutely. Right. So if nothing else, the first thing everybody needs to do is at least have a copy of them that they can say that they own, and a copy that they can essentially use to empower themselves. Because I think there's a lot of collection of data. You charge those corporations for access. Yeah, definitely. I think that's. Um, we have a, your own web services. Yeah, that's a really intuitive concept. Yeah. this is something we've been talking. Yeah, I, I actually have an. Int well, we can maybe talk about it after because it's not in the presentation. But I have a funny idea that, like, because once everybody, if you, if I yeah, could say, it, no, but it's because this, this idea they have up at Berkman now of uh, the Bentler rights management. You know what I mean? Oh, cool. That's really where, cool. where you know, you rather than the digital rights management them managing you, you actually manage, you actually manage the relationship. I, I, I actually, I hadn't heard of that, but I had actually said something. Basically, yeah. like that to Evan. Yeah. So, yeah, b because human beings have never online have never owned all the stuff that they create, right? Because it's always been the second you put that photo online, you're actually you also go. granting so Facebook. Wait, wait. You know, it, his exact example was so I own all my book purposes, and then I tell Amazon, okay, now recommend to me the books you can borrow my data for a couple of minutes. Is that what they're proposing at the Berkman Center? Um, I, forget what, I forget what the system is, but they had a pay, where they related it to was like a payment system where you decide, say, I'm going to spend $30 on music this month, and then and then you you just like, uh, oh. every, everything you hear, you then like tag, and then at the end of the month you go, okay, I listen to like, you know, 100 tunes, so that's this much to, to all these people. You decide how much you're going to pay, yeah. you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe in an extension somewhere to sort of, of the Radiohead model to like to deal with everybody. Yeah, I heard about that, and I think what it does is it, it counts the number of times you hear the song. Yes. And it says, oh, you you've listened to this song x amount of times. Like probably you like this this band. I like, and I think it automatically does something along the lines say, oh, like let's slice your thirty dollars and give them thirty percent. Yeah. Or Whatever. Yeah, I, I think you yeah, can even, you can even sort of like rank things or something as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Pirate Bay was also talking about a similar thing. I don't know if they're the same project or not. All right, but let's. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing a, a seed is going to do is connect to all the web services you currently use and bring down all of the data that you have on those services. So, Facebook profile information, photos, Flickr, Twitter. Basically everywhere. All, 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 yeah. all, all the funny names that they have in so, the world these days. Right. Because fundamentally this is just kind of a, a common sense thing we think is that it's silly that if I want to go talk to find out uh, excuse me find out stuff about Ilya there's no reason why I should have to go through any service to get to that information. I actually like care about Ilya online so yeah, I, I don't care if he's sharing stuff on Last.fm or Flickr or Twitter. I don't care about any of these services. I don't I'm not friends with Facebook, right? I don't care about any of these services. I just want to know stuff about Ilya. So yeah. the beauty of this model is if everybody is responsible for pulling in all their stuff they have online and then all I have to do, or if I have a web server that's doing the exact same thing, then all I have to do is connect with Ilya's web server, and we can just essentially trade information. Yeah, and because what the, the content type also doesn't matter if, if suppose, like, like Max decides to upload, I don't know, like, 
the CAD models or pictures of his cat or whatever Max decides to upload, if my diaspora node is talking to Max's diaspora node, there's no there's no reason to or like or suppose Max says, oh, you should check out this song and it's a message. It, like all the content, we're in a way contact agnostic, so we don't care for what we want to share. We just want to communicate with our friends. So. Um yeah. So, and then also, it's to this point too that if, if, yeah, Ilya is sharing his music, and I don't have a last of I might never see that information ever. But if he's scraping his own information and then sending it to me, I can still know stuff about my friend, stuff that he's willing to share with me. Yeah. Like, suppose I'm a fan of a band, or yeah. So, how are we going to work? Are there, we sort of have three pillars of how we think this is. We're focusing on decentralization, encryption, and works with everything you have. And it, um, so. Because it makes the trend like if if it. If the step is is this large, then the transition to it will get fifty percent more people than if the step is much bigger. So, so how is this maybe different than maybe some of the other decentralized social networking platforms you're talking about? Um, I think one of the cool things that, that we're thinking about is that like you own your own instance of this web application, and it is wholly separate from any other anybody else's anybody else's instance of the application. So um, really, even if, if you're the only person in the entire world that you know that has one, we think it still has use to you because it's pulling in all of your information. So it's you know, aggregating all the stuff you want about you. Um, in the first iteration, or in for the conceivable future, in order to make it easy, we're also going to make it so it's also a client to all these services. Um, so it provides that use value of, you know, we realize not everybody's going to have a diaspora node for you know, the first couple of years. So maybe you do want to sort of put that stuff back upstream. Um, we sort of hope that so eventually. What was this word you called it? A diaspora node? Yeah, or seed, yeah. So, um, yeah, so that's, yeah, that's what we're talking about. I mean, diaspora, that's the name of your system, is that it? That's, yeah. that's, that's the, the version one name, yeah. We didn't wor worry about too much. We, the idea we had for that, because I guess there's, depends on what you consider to be your dandelion. If, if your dandelion is Facebook, and then the, all the seeds spread, right? It means like a scattering of seeds, and it makes sense. But we did sort of realize that once you actually have all your stuff, it's about keeping it, you know, for yourself, not and sharing with your friends, but like having ultimate control over where that information is going. And who hosts, say, like the equivalent of a Facebook group? Um, the group leader has to host it. Uh, yeah, certainly. Um, so I, I mean, it would work. I mean. The same way we have we have email lists or we have I guess Facebook groups and so either a group leader can host it within their own diaspora node or they can spawn a new instance and share it with everyone who subscribes to the that yeah, could be hosted on the internet of any, 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 any regular internet host. Yeah. You, can, you can make something that can run there, that can do that. Yeah. I feel like the group would be its own node, so, so someone might like change, mm -hmm. someone to you know, you know, transfer ownership to someone else. Yeah. It's, it's so to. we were thinking yeah. also, um, so I guess not for version 1, but for version, I don't know, maybe 1.5, to have multiple logins. In particular, so so just for that example, when you want ten people to access your particular group, and you want ten people to be able to be the the people that share content with the entire the entirety of the people that subscribe to this node, there are a lot of ways that could be implemented. Though mm -hmm. you could make nodes that act as slaves to other nodes, and you could just change the master node. I mean, or just have it run on one node and have it be a level of access control. So, yeah, so fundamentally what we're kind of actually sort of proposing is sort of a protocol, right? We're, we're going to be making a web application which sort of adheres to sort of these rules, but just in the fact that, that these nodes themselves are sort of completely autonomous, like it could be implemented in any language you want as long as you sort of adhere to the way we're sort of um, what we're calling like our routing model. Um, you know, you can make it, you know, in whatever language you really decide. So it's it's pretty simple, and it works just like the idea of of an, a, a normal web API. And I'm sorry, this is kind of small for the screen, but I mean, um, basically what we're doing is all of these are actually public routes, right? So let's say my website is max.com and Dan's website is dan.com, right? 
Um, so basically, when you have a friend request, right, or wh whatever we decide to call it, what we're actually doing is exchanging GPG public keys, right? So once I have exchanged my public key with, with Dan, and he has given me my public key, we now have actually, um, what, what our nodes have actually done is created a special public route um, so, directly tied to so, Dan's key. So this friend key, as we call it, yeah. and so I guess the easiest way to think of it is a folder, and so inside of that folder there will be photos, there will be updates, there will be messages, or whatever content we need. Uh, but, there, but it will all be encrypted, so it will be in a way hiding in plain sight. Right. Um, so, so basically, when anybody pings the route, max.com slash 234, or whatever Dan's code is, what my server is actually going to do is pull up whatever JSON representation I have for that particular data and that particular route. So these are like RESTful routes, which so whatever, uh, you know, after the 234 can be any type of media which I'm sharing. It's going to encrypt it with Dan's public key because that's the key tied to 1234, and then it's going to send it out to Dan or to whoever's requesting it. Now, if, I'm sure you guys are all familiar with PGP, and even if Jolly goes to max.com slash 1234, He's going to see a bunch of encrypt my a bunch of my encrypted data, but he doesn't. Th there's, you know, really unless he's the NSA, there's no real good way he's going to be able to figure out that these are pictures. You would have different permissions uh, to absolutely different friends so that they don't right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, and and we were even thinking about there's a, like a little bit of a problem of like let's say I actually do share my location information just to, to some subset of my friends, but maybe I don't share with Ilya. So what we might actually do is, uh, we, you can mask it by sending in all routes for everybody, they get some sort of garbage. Uh, so, so, like, you couldn't sit there and ping all of my, like, photos, Twitter, you know, location. You would always get something back, whether so I actually it, share it or not. Be, like, randomly generated in order to, in a way, so, so that when you have bots attacking max.com slash one, two, three, four, um, they could just get random data, which, even if they try to decrypt, there's nothing there. Uh, you throttle that in such a way that. Uh, and you could also just encrypt some really nice messages. So they do like it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we could do that as well. And, you know, if you're running this you know, on, on your cell phone or at home or something, though, you could have bandwidth. That was basically mm -hmm. my question. Mm -hmm. the vulnerability. Yeah, definitely, I think, like bandwidth is something and, and I think that's well, I guess that's one of the arguments of like why these services became centralized right because in a computer science sense these right. things need to be optimized you know and like you know your algorithm needs to be as you know finely tuned and you know you need to you need to you know compress as many bits as possible because you know Facebook hosts like well, what, a trillion I mean, it's now said that Google don't even have you know pay a cent of money for, for bandwidth because of peering peering arrangements because right. they have the content in fact, the other, you know, backbone people are trying to get into the content business in order to, like, you know, yeah. keep keep their transit prices down. Yeah, but the funny thing, the I guess one of the super magical things about this is that I, I don't know, have, like, 20, like, I don't know, maximum, like, I don't know, like, 200 people who I would, who my node is going to talk to. So when I'm not logged in every five minutes, it can just download all of the updates so it's not slow and have them already on my Diaspora node ready for viewing when I log in. And, and, and I think one thing that Lee touched on too is... You still, you still have to have a port open which other people could could kind of like hammer if they, if they, if they wanted to. Oh yeah, d definitely. And, and there's definitely like the like classic problem of how are we going to deal with like polling versus like are we going to... Uh, push or pull, yeah. Yeah, push or pull. And, and I think that there are is a couple of like Kind of protocols that we're looking at and things we're thinking um, for sort of our future implementation. Uh, um, th th there's there are a lot of like federated hubs that kind of deal with this kind of thing where where th there's a, a hub that I guess is a community hub that's not necessarily somebody owns it but anybody could set one like up. Like a tracker. Yeah, that kind of concept. We were trying to keep it as like decentralized as possible because yeah. we don't necessarily want a point where like other than like. An actual yeah. individual. We should just have my own talk, yeah. talk kind of access. But 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 you have to like get to some sort of where there's some sort of shared, common, you know, uh, like yeah. The, the, for, for for the groups example, the, the, right. for groups, uh, I think, I mean we we talked about this and we'll continue discussing it. But I think for groups it makes sense to 
to have a node that talks to lots of people, and maybe also make it so that it only talks out to them instead of, um, what do I mean by that? So like I run, like suppose I run a list, and th this my particular diaspora node for this group would only, it would, not, it would not pull anything from anyone, it would just send out data. I don't know, suppose, oh, there's a meeting today at 6.30 but, or, yeah. And well, then there's, yeah. What we can do is basically if we're, we're dealing with a lot of information, say like I'm sharing a ton of high definition videos, it wouldn't make any logical sense. So if like Max is like, let me see your videos, that I go, okay, and I like shove out all these high def videos to him every time, because that's gonna, you know, kill my bandwidth pretty easily. So, I mean, what we're thinking about doing is just basically doing like a, a whole diff model, saying like, you know, this was the last time I updated for you, if, you know, I, I send you an encrypted timestamp. And you say, well, the last time I pulled was this time. And if the last time I pulled was after your diff, then you don't have to send me anything because I already have it cached on my system. So, and it's going to be encrypted for me just in case somebody else pulls it from my database. We don't have to worry but about that. If someone like me that cranks out video right. by the yard, that diff is always going to be kind of. Yeah, it's going to be pretty, pretty it, it is better than, you know, getting like, okay, let me get 10 videos for this page. And get, well, if you I think once the video. Once, there's still going to be need for like you know cloud services in, in terms of like media storage. I mean that's you know but, but, but what you're going to be handing out is the links. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And and definitely like um, this is something too we're figuring out because because we want to actually like scrape as much as we can to centralize it just because yeah. we really want to try to figure out ways to get copy and we even we even. Uh, and this is further down the line. This is something I think we're going to like look at this summer. But um, we were even like, kind of toying around with a cool idea where um, we use some sort of like everybody is their own tracker, and we use BitTorrent to distribute these um, videos. Where essentially, like, yeah, that's like, that's, that's that, right. now you're talking, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, which is I think a little bit how Skype works. Mm -hmm. I believe so. Yeah. So I mean, like. Our first version that like we have sort of a prototype running, right? We want to keep it like simple. We want to keep it in scope. We want to we want to keep it something that we can we can build, you know, that we can make real. Because I think that's the most important thing. There's so many. I, mean, I think that even if you build it so that it's something that people just can run along with their WordPresses on their on their websites, yeah, you know, that's that's going to be fine. You know, that's a, that's going to be a great improvement over what exists now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and like. I, to our point earlier, yeah, that much like WordPress, you could install it on your own machine yeah. if you want to. Yeah. If you're a power user. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and uh, another thing, like, like for instance, like sending a message is sort of trivial because what I actually do, if I want to send a message to Dan, I actually send it in. I actually save it on my own server, and whenever he comes to check my my node, it's going to say, "Oh, Max has a message for you," and there's no need to, you know, for a centralized service that's going to ping him or whatnot. It just fits within sort of the, this current model of sort of many instances. Well, and also so in other words, every time you log in, you'll be pinging all your friends. Mm -hmm. When you when yeah. you go to yeah. physically yeah. check. Um, yeah. But the good thing about this is um, using this whole decentralized concept and kind of banking off that for like uh, speed optimizations and stuff. So, you know, say Mac sends me this message and it has like a huge zip file in it, say like a virtual machine or something, there's no reason why I have to um, ping him a lot of times. Once I get that message, it's mine. So even when his node is off, say like it's under his bed and like his mom trips over his cable or something, and his node is off, right? Because I pulled it and it's encrypted for me, I could still see it. And it's not going to cost him anything if I view his file 10 million times. I'm just costing myself. And if it's under my bed, I'm not actually going externally to retrieve a large file like more than once. You should only retrieve it once. Then it's in your possession because he granted me access for this message. You know, one issue with that is, you know, I put up a bunch of Facebook photos. All right. And then I decide, shit, I shouldn't have put a couple of those up. Right. If you have it and you can unencrypt it, there's no way for Max to say, I don't want them to be able to see that anymore. Well, uh, there is some magic, I believe, with, with um, GPG. And I think you can like invalidate. You can time it, yeah. You, you can invalidate your key after you've sent stuff out. Um, this but definitely is like a. Signing. If you encrypt it to, to his key, as long as his key is valid, you can sign it valid. Right, okay, then you can future sign. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but there's an analogous thing to this, which is right now, if you post something on the internet that's like really embarrassing, someone's probably going to cache it for yeah. you. 
So I don't think that's a big change from yeah. right now. But you can do things like Usenet did confront this problem in its early days when they had crazy spammers. And they ended up carrying a cancellation list, which was posts that should be deleted from downstream servers. So you could send out cancels that would say. Yeah, and presumably yeah. you trust your friends to to not do anything too bad to you. Um, so People break up. No, this is yeah, um, this yeah. is true. You, you can't just say. The, the argument with that is right. If it's on the internet, yeah. yeah. If it's yeah. on the internet, I can bet you I can save it, and it's going to be mine forever. However, if we have this model, we could technically work in a timeout schema or something, but it's. Anything's better than right now, right? Is it, uh, after it's, after I've downloaded mm -hmm. the file that you made available to me, right? And I decrypt it on my hard drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's probably there is a decrypted ver you know, unencrypted version of my hard drive, mm -hmm. right? So you decide that that was a mistake for me to have that. Mm -hmm. I mean, then I've still got it. It has to be a voluntary action for you to delete it. Well, yeah. This is true, and so so, so in a way. Um, we are most likely will put in these defaults that since it's open source software, people could could just turn off. But the fact that like this whole cancellation model, we can put that in there and non-technical users will most likely not do that. The other the other issue or that we have been confronting is if we have all of these friends that share lots and lots of stuff with us, our hard drive space is gonna disappear pretty quickly. So well, I think like mm -hmm. for photos and movies, you don't download it all the time. You just like download a reference to it. Mm -hmm. It's like for a text post, like a, a wall post. Yeah. You know, you can download that or that with an RSS feed. Exactly. So, so there's yeah. I was gonna. So there's two things. We can um, do this OAuth model, which is I go sometimes I go to Max to get his photos, and the and then. Retrieve it back, which is most likely what we'll do for the first implementation. I think it has to be a system of drop boxes, and that's got to be somehow. That's got to be up there on the internet. I think that's the only. That's you know, like you know, like Apple, whatever. Mobile me. Yeah, and there's there's actually well, one thing. Drop.io has already. You know, like drop box. I mean, but then you're back in the cloud. Well, you know, right. but, um, well, there is this a, is the advantage of Tahoe PG. file system. Yeah. 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 That's something. But it allows you know. It, that's exists. Then you could plug on. But, mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, it's like the people who do the storage will still be able, will still have the logs, and will right. still be able to sort of, you know. So you'll lose that amount of control. But what you will do get the control of is the social graph, mm -hmm. which, and that's and that's the point of the exercise. And I think that the actual uh, uh, the me the hosting of media is not a practical proposition given bandwidth and everything constraints. You know, there's a reason people don't, you know, host their websites on their own machines. You know, and. and and, it, and the biggest one is, you know, bandwidth restraints, and that, uh, and that this will continue to be there, and that this, this, the, the photo buckets of this world are going to be there for, forever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you can just have a choice of them, as long as you just create, you know, and they have systems. And every, if you have this, they very rapidly introduce systems which will accept you send the key to this person, and they only serve it up to the person that's got the key. And this way will solve your whole problem because you can always remove it. From photo bucket or wherever, and so the problem is solved. Hmm. It yeah. also means the photo bucket has to keep n copies of every image for n being all the people that you. So that's so through. that's actually not. Yeah. No. We, we, mm -hmm. What the usual model for GPG encrypting large blocks to multiple people is to actually RSA encrypt. So you encrypt a header for each person uniquely that contains a symmetric encryption key which is the same across all the encrypted headers. And then the large files are encrypted with the symmetric encryption key. So you only act, actually have to store one copy of the large file, and then you send out this header with an AES key in it. So it's basically like you, yeah. you, you encrypt a password with your PGP key, and you just send the person the password, and the password unlocks. It's the same for everybody. Yeah. And, this, and this is, other, you know, again, a sort of business opportunity for someone to set up you know, media hosting the, the, Accepts the protocols. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, it's actually—I don't think you'd even need that because you can just have a URL in your 
in the message that I passed to Max, and the, what was that that URL would just be an encrypted file that I had put onto yeah. Drop.io or something. But you can, you know, but you can furthermore, you know, by, by password protecting the files in, in a way that only, you know, people can only, in your, you have to send the person, you know, the password before they can get the file that's in, it's in the system. But with something like Tahoe, basically, you've got to use standard protocols that exist already for that. Mm -hmm. So that you, know, you can then, any, anywhere on the internet where you can store stuff, you can make that part of your Tahoe file system with your friends. Uh, so that seems to kind of work with this. Yeah, well, we definitely like, have looked at it. I've talked to a couple, uh, like the guy who maintains the Debian package. Um, he was just saying, like, it sounds like it's like you know, just sort of coming of age, and I, I'm not. I, I guess I haven't looked into it too deeply. I was under the impression it's more for like re having redundancy amongst your friends. It, well, that's something you would want to have with this because it, it, from your mother kids the yeah, sort of running your right. Um, it does have re that's part of it, part of the idea, but it's the, the idea is setting up this redundant file system with your friends, which seems to. Right, but uh, do I have access to Ilya's stuff, or does he just have an encrypted version of my stuff? Uh, and I have an encrypted version of his stuff that well, I can't necessarily access, but it's yeah, just... Well, it's, yeah, it depends on what permissions you do. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's, 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 in, it's, in, the power, it's in the presentation, actually. So, um, so this is, we, we have a prototype. It's uh, working. Uh, we have sort of, we've built it on Ruby on Rails. We know Ruby on Rails. Again, like, the idea is we're almost creating a protocol here of, like, well, if you sort of store all your stuff at this route, and if I get this, and you support GPG in this way, you can write it in whatever crazy language you want to write it in. Ruby on Rails, we think we can make something, you know, lean and mean and quickly, and, and really, again, like, making it real is really important, because we honestly, like, want to use this as soon as possible, so. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. Um, so, yeah, another cool piece of tech, we're using MongoDB, it's a NoSQL database, but the really cool thing about it is um, you can actually store whole files in the database, and so it's a key value database. Oh, um, system. Yeah, with the file system in it, and it's, it's really pretty wicked fast for, like, non-relational data that's not, like, hev heavily looking up within tables and whatnot. Um, uh, again, like yeah, we already have GPG working with full keychain support, so that also means like, uh, you know, my my the the prototype node can now you know encrypt a piece of JSON and send it out to another another node uh, uh, for w whatever uh, key they've sort of said they're using, and. Uh, just to sort of demo to get sort of basic content, uh, we sort of have made very rudimentary plugin system and support for the Twitter and Flickr APIs. This is something, figuring out the plugin architecture and like what services we want, that's something obviously like the beauty of open source is if we can just uh, sort of construct a really easy way to build one, then anybody can build for whatever service they happen to be using, so. Um, and, and yeah, both of those go, uh, I believe, are done as they're both push and pull. Again, we want to like, Make the, it. the Flickr doesn't push it. Okay, um, so Flickr but that's, I don't know, right. a day worth of work. Or half a day. So cool. So then the other thing just for, for us, uh, this is kind of what we've done. We've, it's only, we've only been working on it for like maybe a month or a month and a half from like planning and coding and everything. And we also have finals and everything too. So um, we're actually planning uh, on working on it this summer a lot. So uh, one of the things we want full, robust sort of the kind of that kind of routing API model sort of set, um, so our sort of seeds can talk to each other. Um, again, um, complete PGP encryption. This is actually pretty much done, uh, but we want to make it a little more robust, a little more easily configurable, uh, a nicer kind of web interface to manage your GPG keychain. Um, and again, like I mentioned before, like sort of the plugins and how are they going to work and how are we going to make it so they can scale, how are we going to make sure that if I don't have the last FM plugin and Ilya sends me last FM information, how are we going to keep it agnostic enough that my node is still going to know about how to display it. Um, and again, uh, we want to take some time of, to sort of make this first API. We don't want to necessarily slog the first thing together. We want to actually like build something, live with it for a little while, see if we could simplify it and make it easier and, you know, make more sense. Um, and hopefully by the end of the summer, release sort of a, like, beta version one that is going to be, we're going to use the um, AGPL license to sort of uh, license it, and we'll throw it up on GitHub, and then hopefully once we have some time to kind of really iron out a, a nice, elegant interface, uh, or, yeah, interface for our software. Um, 
Can you run on top of the second sprint? Sure. I'm, or, yeah. Um, second sprint is basically all about maintaining it and extending it. And we're going to get a lot of leverage from the open source community because, I mean, this is really where everybody comes in. I mean, we just want to get a little spark going, I guess, to start a fire. And um, then, you know, we're, we're basically going to work on making, like, a developer network, making sure everybody's on the same page, like, you know, what's going on so people can actually communicate with each other fairly easily. Uh, further streamlining setup, too, as people are making these new modules, say, like, somebody has um, this really obscure network that they belong to, and they want to make a module, I mean, the more the better. So that's what we're going to be doing. And with the, the streamlining setup thing, we want to make it as easy as possible. Say, like, take my sister, for instance, who's computer illiterate. She has a Facebook, and she knows how to use it because she just has to, you know, press a button and it works. Now, um, she's obviously not right now going to put a computer under her bed and <laughs> start hosting everything out of our house. So we just basically want to streamline the setup where, you know, we get as close as possible to her just pressing a button, you know, one-stop shop and just clicking it and setting it up so there's really no barrier to entry. And then she joins and then another button she clicks and she's like, yeah, this is my Twitter account, Flickr, and Facebook. And it just like takes everything and it's like, okay, and it copies it. So all of her information, she doesn't have to worry about, you know, this is a new network. I gotta put all my stuff back on it. It's like, actually, it's gonna take all of your stuff and put it on it. So that's the two buttons set up, basically. And, and, and this is also for developers, right? Our, mm -hmm. our first, who are our first like niche of people as hackers and people who are willing to sort of host this stuff and pay for their own bandwidth and whatnot. But um, one thing, one development model we've been kind of doing that's been kind of cool and we were kind of thinking this would be a cool way to distribute it too is uh, we are actually all developing in a virtual machine where we just have just copied the exact virtual machine and everybody has the same copy. It makes development really easy certainly because you just download it and everybody has the same setup. You don't have to worry about like, oh, my GPG package yeah, doesn't work or this doesn't work. But, but that yeah, we're even thinking of like, That'll be our like development kit. Is you can just download a whole virtual machine and you have the, all the right dev inf environment. Because, um, but in addition to that, in addition to being like really great for our, hopefully for the people who want to like make a plugin or do something else, uh, it could be a really cool way for us to actually distribute the whole application. Uh, there's so many hosting providers out there that like you just sort of install a virtual machine and then the virtual machine runs and oh, sort of hosts. Sandboxed in certain ways. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, um, as far as that goes, if somebody does run it on there, right? Yeah, I mean, the old server, uh, it's separate. Uh, there's a uh, you know, file option. Yeah. Oh, they're running Windows, they get virus, whatever. That is. Yeah, it's also totally. Yeah, people. absolutely. Yeah, it's just separate, and uh, you know, and again, like because a lot there's a lot of these disparate packages. I mean, the first time we were doing this, you know, it takes a long, you know, this is like. You know, kind yes, of fly-by-night yeah. software. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of different things. We're pulling in a lot of different packages that aren't necessary. We've kind of like, uh, you know, we, we've, we've built up interfaces for them to sort of interface, but they necess they weren't there. It's not like, uh, you know, we had to build that. So getting everything to work harmoniously is, uh, the virtual machine has been a really big win. We think it could be a cool way that you just download the whole VM, you put it on whatever, you know, slice host or something, and uh, then you just have to configure DNS information and generate a new public key and you're ready to go. So, um, and then the other things that we want to think about this summer um, that definitely aren't version one things, but we definitely think like are super powerful technologies that can empower people. Um, Tahoe FS, as we already mentioned, um, XMPP, which was um, one of the services you actually recommended that we check out. Or, I did. <laughs> uh, yeah, I believe, uh, which one? Uh, one Social Web? Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. That that yeah. that's all built on XMPP. That's actually Vodafone. Yes. Yes. I put it on the right school thing. Yeah. And uh, Ilya is really obsessed about VoIP. I, I I am hugely obsessed about VoIP because I just I want to just like the menu in England. The uh, the Vodafone. The social on social web was it. Um, the idea that it was over there and not over here. Yeah, well, yeah, it, it's actually a corporate-sponsored project by Vodafone. Vodafone. Yeah, yeah, so I, yeah. So, and I mean, so they're also into, I guess, XMPP and voice over IP. But I think, I think in order to have people migrate, it has to be really awesome. And 
part of the reason why it will and should be awesome is because uh, because phone calls cost money these days, as at the most. Yeah. I mean, apparently. Um, Not really. So, but like, I don't know. I wanna I wanna be able to, out of the box, call Max if he's online. And and. Or, when it runs on my on my cell phone, I want to just be able to call any of my friends for free. And, and, and this kind of also goes into a category of, you mentioned owning your own social graph. Like So many normal applications that we also use would be so empowered if just by default they just were, had awareness of my whole social graph. And there wasn't necessarily the privacy concern that I'm le letting just another service access all of my friend information. I mean, I, I know that um, just hooking my, hooking, say, my notice board in through network blogs into my web page or, you know, into, in, into my... Facebook profile, so I can write something on the WordPress and it goes out through through uh, Facebook. You know, it's such a powerful connection that people are never going to come and look at the blog. Right. Once, you know what I'm yeah. Saying? And so I mean, it's obvious, you know, our, you know, that people could go for RSS and readers, but in fact, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't happen. So it's uh, it's funny what does work and what doesn't. You know, and I think there's a lot of lessons to learn from why. MySpace beat, beat down Friendster and why, you know, a Facebook beat down MySpace, mm -hmm. you know, as to what, what, what made those things, to find what is going to be that little killer thing that's going to make everybody go, that's so yesterday and this is that's so true. today. I mean, I have spent a little bit of time thinking about it. I think in a way it's also like simplicity mm -hmm. and things not being too too cluttered. Yeah. Because MySpace became cluttered and I think Facebook is becoming really cluttered. So that's one of the things that in our user interface we just right. want to yeah. make it slick. But not only that, like like the idea of like empowering everybody by showing them that they have all this information and sort of the sum of all of that information about you is really powerful when it's a way that... I think there's, there's language still to be talked through on this. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm even thinking like, let's say if I get some sort of new smartphone, right? There's yeah. like, right now you have to plug in like, you know, five or six different services, even if there is a service for different information, whether or not it's your like contacts, your music, your videos, yeah, all just, these different things. Whereas normally what you do in a phone is all you do is put your friends in the address book yeah. and then the rest of it... You, that should be it. Right. You know what I mean, that's yeah. full right. stop. You know, that's right. they're but in your address book, which means that you're that you're networked, but you don't have to go through any right to like enter them into that service. Right, yeah. and, and we see it as like you'll have your own route in your diaspora node. So all you do is you just point your phone at your own route, and your own route knows that you have permission over everything, and boom, you type in your URL, your username, and your password, and it pulls down every relevant piece of information about you because it's, it's in one place. You, you could apply this idea to like any gadget that you'd want to sort of, sort of enlighten with your data because, and th there's not like a risk there other than the fact that maybe no, you're, you're copying it. The other thing it. is like, you know, it's this business of like, the fact that people have different places, you know, you know, you have like me, you know what I mean? I'm, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that, uh, but the, you know, the, the face they put onto their family versus the face they put onto their friends mm -hmm. versus the face they put onto their workers. Mm -hmm. This is something that, that uh, Facebook is obviously having a problem with this. Mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 your idea of having, you know, going in and how you set your, your identity of, of naturally sort of just being able to classify your friends, I mean, into, into like what personality, what facet of you mm -hmm. they, they, they know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And definitely the permission models are very, very key for, for what we're doing. Well, I believe that could, you know, at the moment, that's a weakness there. That's a definite weakness yeah. in, the, in the Facebook model. Yeah, and, uh, that's, and that's also, like, in a way, a low-hanging fruit, right? We want to yes. pick up as much of these awesome, I guess, like, in a way, silly low-hanging fruits that uh, Facebook, I guess, in a way, maybe doesn't want yeah. people to have because they want to just everyone to share with everyone. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. So, I guess this is our summer plus plus plans. <laughs> and so, I guess, so we want to just work on it full time. And Max can talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so I mean, we all kind of actually like turn down jobs and whatnot. And what we're actually trying to do right now is uh, we just got approved for Kickstarter, which is what the hack, 
Um, so we're trying to actually raise some money so we can go and just think about this for full time. We really Mozilla. think. I'm sorry. Sorry, I did. Yeah, I, I saw that link too. Yeah, definitely. Um, is that also like a like a fundraising platform? Or? Uh, they are going to. Uh, I'm calling correctly. Put uh, give I think ten grants of twenty five thousand dollars. Okay. Seed money, which this you know, program for this. And there was a project uh, just like this one. Mm -hmm. Blanking out here, uh, that was put off there, and one person put it off. And I signed up to be part of it. There's been no action since. If you, uh, you know, wanted to just get in, plug into there's, that. There's a thousand projects on there. I mean, that's the whole thing. Is you, could, you know, you can dig like the boat up or down the project. So it's like a project gets floated up. But to plug into that, uh, when you're already doing something, and have all the of support. <sighs> cool. So, um, yeah, so we're definitely going to take a look at that. Um, but we have our Kickstarter going to live tomorrow. We've got, we made some funny videos. Oh. Uh, what? I still didn't give you, do you is nope. too late? Nope, it's not too late. We can edit it at any time. We edit more time. edit it even more than five. Okay. Yeah, the text. So that's going to be really great. Uh, I'm sure you guys, guys, guys get spam from Evan with those links, maybe. But, um, yeah, we made a good video. And, again, we, we'd actually love feedback, you know, from you guys, too. Uh, get to see sort of our dry first bait like alpha presentation uh, clearly got some things to iron out um, we actually Evan and also we're, we're lucky enough that Evan hooked us up with Evan Moglin we're going out to dinner with him so we're gonna kind of get his feedback and sort of um, you know whether that's you know just see what he says you know maybe get his blessing maybe not maybe just uh, you know he says amazing things so he inspired us once already so who knows what uh, you know kind of awesome things he's gonna tell us um, there's also the awesome foundation which is like a small small grant that's kind of a new project i don't know if you've heard about it but uh it's just like 10 people get together every month and and they all give a hundred dollars to something they just think is cool so uh like uh, uh, elizabeth stark is actually on it uh, clay shirky is actually on it and uh, another woman who we also sort of have some sort of exposure to is also on it and so it's also it's also city based so there's the new york city awesome foundation boston awesome foundation san francisco awesome foundation um so i guess yeah so so yeah so New York City one yeah well. so again like we we just want to like we just need to subsist on pasta basically for three months and uh, sort of make this awesome open source project so um, yeah that's what we're doing about this project so we think uh, it's gonna be gonna be real open source software in three months so um, thank you very much for giving us a little extra bit of time to talk about this with you and uh, our website is sort of like going up now. Did you get or join psvero.com mm -hmm. what about psvero.com and .org or presumably gone they're gone yeah. all, of, all of them are uh, uh, domain scalping states so yeah, one, of, one of them is the an actual guy .com was available and the .org was not no 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 uh, uh, join them. no no we have join but, but they just they right. just uh, yeah but, but diaspora.com and .org I think are scalping so states mm -hmm. yeah but you know maybe one day but yeah, I don't know. Is there legislation? Not legislation, but like, is I can do anything about that? Because I read. No. So, oh, okay. It's big business. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, what they, you know, I mean, something that you to, that you might want to think about with this stuff would be getting a, a you know, it's like a top level domain that would be, you know, specifically for the purpose of the, of the service. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, we were kind of imagining that, like. I mean, if you had money, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah that's it. It's, 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 <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like, you yeah. know, 185 grand to like, you know, it's five, it's half a million to like do it, but it would be, you know, cool. it could, something that could work. Yeah, I mean, we were kind of thinking again, like, we already, there already is a really great, you know, distributed name service out there. There might, the, there might the be DNS, some country code somewhere that might use that. be. Yeah, no, yeah. Did we definitely like look. Well, ME is, I you know, is actually already pretty over, over there, state. There, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, we wanted to just get making it, so naming yeah. it was... Uh... That was great. But, um, do you have an actual working demo to show us? Or? Um, we have, like, the prototype, we have it in two parts. I mean, I guess we could show you two of the parts, but like, one part we have, just because we haven't merged our branches, our Git branches yet, but we could we could boot up the different versions. What, what, what version, uh, who's... Uh, Branch is working. Hello? Hey, we'll, we'll keep Master working. All right. Yeah. Master. So, yeah, so this is just the Mongo. Yeah. 
It's been my experience that impromptu demos of pre-alpha projects probably is... Oh, yeah, you know what? Idea. GPG isn't working on my machine, actually, so there's not I mean, that much relation. Can you do me Yeah. Okay. The Ruby G GPG gem is not in super a lot of high use, so um, we essentially had to go through so many so many different so enters. But we figured that from us. We figured it out, so we've been able to like post back to some like six months old posts that were unanswered about how to fix it, which is pretty cool. Um, so is this already running? I think it is. I don't know which. Uh... Nope. I think you're probably not on master. No, I think this is that GPG agent info thing. But you're on encryption. What? Yeah, you're on encryption. You also modify. This thing right here. Trying to do one. No, just trying to put. All right, this is aggravated. This was maybe a bad idea, but nope. I don't think that this is gonna work. Just comment it out. You could just check the control. Zero encryption. What are you telling me to do? Just comment out in the um, in the post controller. On the top, remember? Just comment those two lines up. Yeah, okay, so. That's it. Anyways, okay, so this is this is how it, it looks, and I think there's just a, a single bug with the encryption and uh, per session. So this is a public view, or? Yes, yeah, so, 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 yeah, right now, yeah, um, Basically, the, what we're essentially saying is that, like, it also can serve as your website, and you can host your blog here, and your Twitter updates. If you want to make them public, then you know what? Then that's you can make them public, and people could go to, you know, your website and see w whatever content you want to leave unencrypted. Essentially, that's up to you. Um, um, certainly, every anytime you, you're going to be sending something to someone. Uh, you're, we're still going to use encryption if it's to a certain person. Maybe, maybe there's, um, you know, in the future, maybe we even have even more more fine grain. Um, you know, maybe on like a per post level, it's like this post only goes to friends. This post is public. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so certainly, yeah. So as of right now, this would be sort of the public view, or or actually the owner view. Actually, is is the way that I think that 
this scope is going. That if I was, because the idea is I can, I will always be able to go to maxhalsberg.com, log into my site, and view everything, right? Because what we're essentially saying is that in order to view all of your friends' information, you're never actually going to leave your website, right? So if I went yeah, to yeah, this is this is after you log in, right? So that was yep. me looking at Dan's page. What when we look at friends? Will we see anything? Uh, the, uh, there's nothing implemented here, but essentially what is happening on the back end, but is we don't have uh, front end for, is it's going through and pinging all of the people you've sort of registered as your friend, right? You can oh, I get this database has been wiped. Anyways, so there's not much to really show, but um. So so services and manage. So manage, you would add friends, you would add their um, public key, or no no, this is the friend key, and then this is the uh, the public key the. GPG probably, and then under services you can add Twitter. And you can add Twitter, Flickr, it's username, mine. password. Oh, this is That's cool. weird. Yeah. One of the great things about using GPG keys is there's already a federated index system for GPG keys. You know, PGP key servers. There are probably like a hundred that all you know sync to each other, and they have all the things that we need. Basically, there's a comments field that you throw a URL into. There's a little avatar fields and name. It's under That's pretty much it. Sure. Anyway, so yeah, it's definitely still not done. So, um, but you know, it's going to be there, and I think this isn't. This is not that much like yeah. Earth time. <laughs> and also, you can imagine like there being an email field here, a calendar field here, and yeah, I mean, whatever. Sky's the limit. Yeah, I mean, yes. and definitely, like, the whole social context, we think, is, like, it's, again, like a low-hanging fruit, and, again, it's something, when we make it, we can, people will understand that that kind of sort of model, but in the future, we, we even see that, you know, people could do a lot of these, like, cloud-based apps. Like, one of the things that I think is a little bit scary is how, like, Google is now making, like, an app store for, like, Google apps, and there are all these different little services that all do some little handy thing, and they use your Google key keychain and Google Web Space and all these other things. Um, but we kind of think that most of those things are, as Evan, Evan said, like PHP doodads. And there's no reason why they couldn't just be a plugin and sort of adds a bunch of functionality locally to your node. And also, that way you can say, like, none of my applications, you know, phone the mothership with all of my data. They'll just stay on my node. Another thing is, these don't have to be content types. You know, you could have a, I want to look at just things for my close friends, or I want to look at just videos. I mean, I, you know, I still say, you know, what you were saying about keeping it simple, mm -hmm. it's already pretty pretty complex, with, you know, when you're, when you're getting even up to that level, mm -hmm. you know, but just like, you know, basically, you know, with the Facebook, I mean, you've got like the status updates, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the photographs and the videos and, you know, and, and so on, you know, is you, you, the same clutter that you were talking about is there down for, you're almost getting into the same thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, you're getting into like, you know, service management. I mean, I, you know, if you look at stuff like friend feed and so on, it's like, it's too much. You just go there and say, I just don't need to know that much. You know, mm -hmm. and that's, you know, one of the reasons why people like the Facebook is it condenses everything into like that one news feed. Yeah, and, and definitely that, that's what like this, where this view is going to be, like, more or less just like a, a very concise, you know, sort of single stream of, of what's happening. And, and, and uh, again, like, right now this is sort of like development mode where we're trying to, you know, maybe extend it in all these different directions. So, like, uh, you know, this isn't necessarily even like our, like, front end. This is yeah, just what well, Dan's kind of thinking. I think the main thing is that this could be a little... Um, it looks a little weird. It's actually that um, these are just filters for different content types. Everything is actually of type post. Yeah. Um, so basically on a feed page, we're just saying pull in all posts, which yeah. Yeah. it doesn't know what a yeah. video it is. It doesn't know what a photo is. No. Um, you know, the thing, you know, which, which uh, um, Facebook is doing now, of like, you know, where they're using the algorithms to, like, you know, Filter your news feed to like make it. I mean, I have to say, you know, I'm now I'm, you know, 700 friends or something. You know, I find I'm, you know, I'm. I used to like to read everything, but I don't have the time, and it's a useful function. Yeah, and about those things. So, so one, I guess, yeah, criticisms that people have is that 
if they only had a disable news feed from a particular friend or yeah. disable every update for a particular friend, it would be a lot better. So that, that's yeah. that's how Facebook started. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, yeah. That was how they started. They moved to this model, which well, is which is like too bulky. And the, the problem is like you're also kind of like forced into this bulk. Um, I don't know. Like I don't like for me like Facebook is like a little too cluttered by default. So in this way, I mean. We wanted to, yeah, be super. Well, you could make a friends list, and then you know, click on a friends yeah. list, and you only post from those friends. So. Yeah. Well, also, yeah. Well, what mm -hmm. we're yeah. also thinking is like a point system, and we normalize data yeah. and all that. Could Facebook stuff. not do that simple? They do. I think they, they, do. they do. You have but, but, news feed but, in most recent. You don't have an option. Yeah, to just do. show me from this. From my NYU friends. Yeah, 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 you do. Yeah, you do. That's a that's the whole basis of the, of the you know system that you can group your friends like that. I but the reality the reality of it is for the really average for the average user like your sister or me probably yeah. we don't be bothered to like be grouping our friends. I never used the thing. It took way too much time. So so I yeah. think when you add a friend, um, that that will be one of the things like what. Because because it's a one-time use sort of thing. You only have to say, oh, this person yeah. is in my. It answers two, yeah. but the two questions, which are one, which are the most relevant or talked about posts, and that's in, that's in the regular news feed, and the recent is what's 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 up now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it, it hits the two things. To me, you know, one of the things that I don't like about Facebook is that, um, for instance, I found a website about a year ago. It was this really good website where. People, you would rent out their front row, their rooms, you know, for like three days. You could call up any town that had all these people put in their thing. Mm -hmm. I posted it to, to a couple of people on Facebook. What a good thing! And then a month ago, two months later, I'd forgotten what it was, and there was no way that I could go back and find out. You know, so in some ways, it's a good thing, like conversations that disappear into, like, you know, you forget what you were talking about yesterday. What, what, what do you think about that? About the ability to, like. Search and recall conversations that's, uh, from before, actually, which is what's so good cool. about blogs. And that's stuff. that's actually really funny because he's so been talking about that. For like. that's, that's what I've been crazy about. Because uh, I deleted my Facebook recently after hearing Evan's talk. Yeah. Uh, like two months ago, which was great. But you suspended it. In other words. No, no, no. I deleted it. Deleted it. There's like a special link you can click. I don't know what's backed up or not. Like, I take it with a grain of salt, but. Basically, just future proofing myself. He can't log back in. Though. I can't log back in. No. I'm basically okay. gone. But the thing is, like, I have this folder, right? And it was all sorted by name, not by date. So I was going through and, like. Well, you, he used Backupify, which is a service that right. scrapes your Sorry. Facebook. Yeah. I scraped my whole thing before I deleted it. So it put it into a folder. And everything was organized by name instead of date. So I was going through and I was seeing, like, my high school prom photos and like all this stuff that I like completely forgot it was there I guess which is the same as what you were saying I'm so, saying you know status yeah. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it's like cool stuff that um, I guess my whole thing is that the conversations you have with people the thing is yeah like time Facebook takes time and it's very linear we have one yeah. dimension right yeah but I mean that works to only some extent but this one dimension of time doesn't relate to my interest of what's going on and also if I go to my, my, my feed page, right? If I go to my page, I'm going to see... I would like a function, quite simply, on certain conversations, at least, to go save, save this conversation. Yeah. This is a good one. Right. You know, I mean, which, which is something that they don't have there. Um, you know, because occasionally there are very good conversations that you want to... Something that we also yeah. want to add is the ability to prioritize uh, messages from certain people or other types of filters so that uh, you know if my wife sends me an email the house is burning down, that that comes you know up to the top and if something else uh, you know that's that you know some person I hear from very frequently and I'm less interested in. Uh, there are a couple of different ways to filter that, both by the content and by who they are. So that right. you, can, you don't feel you can do that in the friends filters right. quite simply. That's that's what that's for. Right. Yeah. You're really free to read me off the filters. It's a, basically a battle between the linearity of time. But what I what I think is the other thing is that it's still like a little bit of I think diaspora is a good concept. I think you know from from everybody going out, you know, that I think this is a, a very 
and that I believe that half of the business of this is in the word. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that, you know, that, that's about it's about seventy percent of it is just in the word that you use, the name that you give it. Mm -hmm. And I still think there's another name to be made for the nodes. Mm -hmm. That's that's the thing that's yet to. And we were thinking seeds. We we, we seeds or what? Or dandy, I think. I, I, don't, you know, I don't know. Because it's it's a home and it's your profile. I mean, this is why Facebook, you know, it does well. You know, because the idea of, you know, if you're having the profile in the Facebook and that was the original thing, what was the profile? So this is more. This is you know, this isn't just the profile. It's more than that. It's your it's it's your relationship. It's your. You it's know, kind of your avatar. It's, your, it's, it's really. kind of like your. It's kind of like your personality. And I think you're still to come up with that word mm -hmm. when you know, and that's when you will have arrived when you have when you when you know what that word is going to be. Cool. Thank you again very much. And uh, yeah, thanks, yeah. guys. Yeah, thank you. Sorry for thank taking you. a little extra yeah. of your time. But uh, yeah, have a good day. Yeah, a lot more valuable than whatever else we would have traveled about at <laughs> the same time. Well, now we're just going to bitch about one word there, right? Uh, well, I would like to say, you know, I would like to just say, well, I started a mailing list today to like keep it going. So you're taking over one with it? I got to yeah, go with the compilers, so I'll see you I'll see you guys at nine? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, is there one thing, actually? Could you just, because I, okay, can you just tell me what your names are again so oh, I can identify sure. you? I'm um, Rafi Sofer. Yeah. Maxwell Salzberg. Uh, yeah. Daniel Kirby. Yeah. Ilya yeah. Zudomarski. Okay. Thank you. 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 Absolutely. All right, thank you. Have a good one. Nice, guys. Good night.